How did our universe emerge from the void, transforming nothingness into a tapestry of galaxies and stars? This narrative delves into celestial enigmas, highlighted by pioneering astronomical findings. Discover the role of pulsars as the cosmos's unparalleled timekeepers and unravel the mystery behind GPM J1839-10's cryptic signals. Experience the genesis of cosmic illumination through the Amaterasu event, marking the universe's transition from darkness to the birth of celestial bodies. Stand in awe of the vast galactic rings, structures that defy our conventional understanding of cosmic design. Concluding with the story of Irondale, ancient light bridges the expanse of time, connecting us to the universe's nascent moments. This exploration invites you to uncover the grandeur of the cosmos, crafting a narrative that intertwines light, gravity, and the faint whispers from the universe's most secluded corners. the vast expanse of space where stars are born and galaxies collide, there is a phenomenon so elusive that it has been dubbed the ghost of the universe. It is not about spirits and not a figment of one's imagination, but about ripples in the very fabric of space-time, gravitational waves. Albert Einstein first predicted their existence more than a century ago. But it wasn't until 2015 that humanity was finally able to detect them. Yet these waves are not just a cosmic whisper, they are the universe's way of telling its own story. A story we are only beginning to decipher. Imagine a celestial body so dense that just a teaspoon of its material would weigh billions of tons. These are pulsars, remnants of exploded stars that serve as cosmic clocks with unprecedented precision. Scientists use these cosmic chronometers scattered throughout our galaxy to listen to the ghostly murmurings of the universe. The universe has a story to tell, and it's time to listen. According to Jocelyn Bell Burnell, gravitational wave astronomy will be the astronomy of the 21st century. But what are these elusive gravitational waves, and why have they so captured the minds of scientists and stargazers? Gravitational waves were first predicted by Albert Einstein in 1915 and is part of his general theory of relativity. For decades, they remained a mathematical curiosity, a byproduct of equations describing the distortion of space-time by massive objects. Imagine that you're throwing a stone into a pond. The stone disturbs the water, creating ripples that spread around. Similarly, when massive celestial bodies such as black holes or neutron stars interact, they disturb the fabric of space-time by sending ripples, gravitational waves that spread through the universe. It wasn't until a century after Einstein's prediction that we had the technology to detect these ripples. In 2015, LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, made a groundbreaking announcement. They had detected gravitational waves from the collision of two black holes, confirming Einstein's theory and opening a new window to space. But detecting these waves is no small task. As Professor Kip Thorne notes, the stretching and compression of space by a gravitational wave is so slight that it is staggering. That's where pulsars come into play, but more on that later. Why are gravitational waves so important? They offer us the opportunity to observe cosmic events that would otherwise be invisible. They can provide insight into the behavior of black holes, the nature of neutron stars, and even the early moments of the universe. As we delve into this new area of astronomy, we are not just using telescopes that capture light, we are using the entire galaxy as a gravitational wave detector. 
So imagine a celestial object so dense that it packs the mass of our sun into a sphere only a few miles in diameter. These mysterious objects are known as pulsars and are the most accurate timekeepers in the universe. Pulsars, discovered in 1967 by Jocelyn Bell Burnell and Anthony Hewish, are the remnants of massive stars that exploded as supernovae. What remains is a highly magnetized rotating core emitting beams of electromagnetic radiation. As Dr. Mara McLaughlin states, pulsars are incredibly stable rotators. Their predictability is comparable to an atomic clock. Indeed, the stability of pulsars is remarkable. Some pulsars rotate hundreds of times per second, and their rotation period can be predicted with remarkable accuracy, making them ideal cosmic clocks. Scientists have harnessed the power of this cosmic clock amazingly. By observing an array of pulsars scattered across our galaxy, they've created what is known as the Pulsar Synchronization System, or PTA. This array serves as a highly sensitive detector of gravitational waves. As gravitational waves travel through space, they cause tiny but noticeable fluctuations in the timing of pulsar signals. It is these fluctuations that scientists are looking for when trying to detect elusive gravitational waves. According to Dr. Xavier Siemens, the pulsar timing method is the only way to detect low-frequency gravitational waves. The precision required for this kind of work is staggering. We are talking about measuring pulsar synchronization changes to within a few hundred nanoseconds. It's like trying to measure the thickness of a sheet of paper at the distance from the Earth to the Moon. So as we've learned, pulsars are not just fascinating objects. They are essential tools in our quest to understand the universe. They serve as beacons in the dark reaches of space guiding scientists into the uncharted waters of gravitational wave astronomy. Nanograv is a consortium of scientists and engineers founded in 2007, dedicated to the ambitious task of detecting gravitational waves using pulsars. As Dr. Andrea Lahman puts it, we're not just looking at the universe, we're listening to it. Two key players in this endeavor are the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico and the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia. These are not just ordinary telescopes. They are ears attuned to the symphony of the cosmos. Nanograv uses what is known as the Pulsar Timing Array, or PTA. This array uses precise synchronization of signals from multiple pulsars to detect tiny distortions caused by the passage of gravitational waves. It's like a cosmic spider web, where each thread is a pulsar and the spider at the center is our telescope system. In 2020, Nanograv hit the headlines with data hinting at the possible detection of a gravitational wave background. While this was not a definitive detection, it was a tantalizing sign that we were on the right track. Dr. Joseph Simon described it as a strong hint of a long-awaited signal. The work of Nanogram is not the effort of one person or group of people. It's part of a global network of scientists and observatories working together to unlock the deepest mysteries of the universe. Collaboration is key. And as Dr. Mara McLaughlin notes, the more pulsars we can add to our array and the more we can collaborate internationally, the stronger our detection capabilities will become. Imagine using the entire galaxy as a scientific tool. It sounds like the idea of a science fiction novel, but that's exactly what astronomers do when they use pulsars to detect gravitational waves. The galaxy becomes a colossal, finely tuned detector, operating on scale beyond imagination. Each pulsar in our galaxy can be viewed as a single data point in this grand experiment. But as we discussed earlier, it is not just any data point. It is a very precise clock that ticks with astonishing regularity. 
Traditional telescopes allow us to see the universe in various forms of light, but when we use the pulsar scattered throughout our galaxy, we don't just see, we feel ripples in space-time. It's a completely different way of observing the universe. When a gravitational wave passes through a galaxy, it causes small changes in the timing of pulsar signals. These changes are incredibly subtle, often lasting only a few hundred nanoseconds. However, when you're dealing with precise objects like pulsars, even such tiny variations become significant. Detecting these changes requires an extraordinary level of precision and a deep understanding of the various factors that can affect pulsar synchronization. Everything from interstellar gas to the pulsar's own magnetic field can introduce noise into the data. Separating this noise from the potential gravitational wave signal is a monumental task. The beauty of using a galaxy size detector is that it allows scientists to study gravitational waves of much lower frequencies than ground-based detectors such as LIGO or Virgo can. These low-frequency waves may hold the key to understanding supermassive black hole mergers and other large-scale cosmic events. By turning our galaxy into a colossal scientific instrument, we're not just pushing the boundaries of what's possible in observational astronomy. We're redefining our understanding of the cosmos. In the field of science, some discoveries simply add footnotes to existing textbooks and some require a complete rewrite. The results of Nanograv 2023 fall into the latter category. These are not just incremental updates. These are seismic shifts in our understanding of the universe. Earlier this year, Nanograv Collaboration made an announcement that caused a wave of excitement in the scientific community. After years of careful observations and data analysis, they presented evidence of a persistent gravitational wave background. As Dr. Joseph Simon remarked, this is the moment we've been waiting for. The background of gravitational waves is akin to a cosmic symphony, a continuous hum of low-frequency gravitational waves filling the universe. Unlike loud and isolated events such as black hole mergers, this background is a subtle, ubiquitous signal. It is the white noise of the cosmos, and detecting it is a monumental achievement. The implications of this discovery are profound. The background of gravitational waves may provide clues to the events that occurred shortly after the Big Bang. It may also shed light on the mysterious dark matter and dark energy that make up much of the universe. The 2023 results also have implications for theoretical physics. They serve as a rigorous test of the general theory of relativity and could potentially reveal deviations that point to new physics. This is a tantalizing prospect that excites theorists and experimentalists alike. The public reaction to the results of Nanograv 2023 study has been one of awe and wonder. It's a testament to science's ability to capture the imagination and evoke a sense of collective curiosity, reminding us that the universe is far more complex and fascinating than we ever dared to imagine. As we stand on the threshold of new discoveries, it's natural to wonder what the future holds for gravitational wave research. Future advances in technology will undoubtedly lead to more sensitive detectors capable of picking up even fainter signals from space. Imagine telescopes not only on Earth, but strategically placed throughout our solar system, working in unison to create a system-wide pulsar timing array. New materials and computational methods are also on the horizon. These could greatly reduce the noise in our measurements making it easier to detect gravitational waves and understand their properties. As we improve our instruments, our window on the universe is expanding. And speaking of pulsars, it's impossible not to mention the cover of Joy Division's iconic Unknown Pleasures album. This iconic black and white graphic features 80 wavy lines 
each representing the signal from pulsar B1919 plus 21, the first pulsar ever discovered. To mark the 40th anniversary of the record, researchers from the Jodrell Bank Observatory at the University of Manchester revisited this very pulsar a few years ago. They recorded its signals using a radio telescope located just 14 miles from the studio where the album was recorded. The cover image, seemingly chaotic at first glance, on closer inspection actually reveals some order. This star still continues to be the subject of intense research to this day. Interestingly, the signal of Pulsar B1919 plus 21 has remained remarkably constant over the years. Recent observations from the University of Manchester's Jodrell Bank Observatory show that the pulsar continues to emit its characteristic radio waves just as it did four decades ago. Can gravitational waves help us understand the mysterious dark matter and dark energy? Can they provide insight into the early moments of the universe, the moments after the Big Bang? The possibilities are as limitless as the universe itself. As we look into the future, one thing is clear. Gravitational wave research is not a passing trend. It is a growing field that could revolutionize our understanding of the cosmos. It is a journey of discovery that we are just beginning. And the road ahead is long, winding, and full of wonders yet to be discovered. Like clockwork, every 22 minutes for the past 35 years, a signal has pierced the silence of space and reached Earth. It's not a satellite or any man-made object. It's a signal from deep space, which is a mystery. Scientists call it GPM J1839-10, but its origin remains mysterious. Is it a message, a phenomenon, or a clue to something bigger? The signal captured by one of Earth's most powerful telescopes has become the subject of global curiosity and debate. Where could it be coming from, and why should we care? Today we'll delve into a cosmic detective story that challenges our understanding of the universe itself. Let's get started. So how can we tune in to unlock the secrets of such a signal? The tool that makes our space exploration possible is radio astronomy. The story begins in the 1930s when American physicist Carl Jansky was researching radio interference. What he discovered was unexpected. Radio waves emanating from the Milky Way. This accidental discovery marked the beginning of radio astronomy. Unlike traditional astronomy, which relies on visible light, radio astronomy listens to the universe. It tunes to frequencies inaccessible to the human eye, revealing celestial phenomena that would otherwise remain hidden. Since its inception, radio astronomy has undergone a technological revolution. Today's radio telescopes are marvels of engineering, capable of picking up signals from unfathomable distances. In the remote outback of Western Australia sits a space detective unlike any other the Murchison Broadband Array. It's not just a telescope, it's a sophisticated network designed to explore the farthest reaches of the universe. Composed of thousands of antennas scattered across an arid landscape, the Murchison Widefield Array is an engineering feat and a testament to human curiosity. Each antenna is like a finely tuned ear listening intently to a whisper. Behind the scenes, a team of dedicated scientists and engineers work tirelessly to calibrate and maintain this complex system. What's their goal? To pick up signals over a wide range of frequencies. This is crucial for studying different celestial phenomena, as each emits its own unique radio signature. Once captured, these signals are processed in a state-of-the-art data center. Here, powerful algorithms sift through the cosmic noise to identify patterns and anomalies, turning raw data into valuable scientific discoveries. 
Among the array's most intriguing catches are fast radio bursts, or FRB. These high-energy phenomena are incredibly brief, lasting only milliseconds, yet emit as much energy as the sun emits in nearly a century. It was in this cosmic cacophony that our mysterious GPM J1839-10 signal was discovered. Unlike other signals, this one has a rhythmic pattern and has been arriving at Earth every 22 minutes for the past 35 years. What sets this signal apart is its consistency and longevity. While most cosmic signals are random or short-lived, this one's proven to be both stable and constant making it a subject of intense study and debate. So unlike time signals that come and go, GPM J1839-10 arrive continuously every 22 minutes without fail. Its rhythmic pattern is unlike anything we've encountered in the field of radio astronomy. For 35 years, it's maintained this cycle challenging our understanding of cosmic phenomena. The initial discovery was met with skepticism. Could it be an artifact or some kind of interference? Rigorous checks were made and yet the signal persisted. Subsequent observations only confirmed its existence, making it one of the most enduring mysteries of radio astronomy. So what makes GPM J1839-10 different from other cosmic signals? Most signals from celestial bodies, such as pulsars and magnetars, are either sporadic or have different intervals, but not this one. Its 22-minute periodicity is like a metronome in a vast orchestra of cosmic signals, a rhythmic constant in a sea of variables. Further analysis reveals even more peculiarities. The waveform does not follow the typical profiles of known celestial radio emissions. Its frequency and amplitude have nuances that have yet to be fully understood, complicating an already confusing mystery. Many theories have been proposed, from rotating neutron stars to strongly magnetic magnetars, as well as even more exotic theories like the interaction between double black holes. However, none of them meet all the requirements perfectly, and that leaves the scientific community in a state of intrigued bewilderment. When it comes to mysterious radio signals from space, suspicion often falls on pulsars. These celestial beacons are known to emit beams of radio waves, making them prime candidates for any unexplained cosmic chatter. But what are pulsars? Pulsars are neutron stars born from the remnants of massive stars that have become supernovae. They spin at incredible speeds. When they spin, their magnetic fields generate beams of electromagnetic radiation, including radio waves. These rays sweep through space like the beams of a lighthouse on the sea. When these rays cross the Earth, our radio telescopes pick them up as pulses hence the name pulsars. The signals from pulsars are usually quite regular, often with millisecond accuracy. This predictability has even led to the use of some pulsars as space clocks to aid in tasks such as spacecraft navigation. So, could GPM J1839-10 be a pulsar? At first glance, one might think so given its rhythmic 22-minute interval. However, if you dig deeper, the differences become obvious. Unlike typical pulsar signals, which have a constant shape and amplitude, GPM J1839-10 exhibits features that set it apart from others. Its waveform does not follow the profiles we usually associate with pulsars, and its amplitude exhibits variations that have yet to be explained. Moreover, the longevity and permanence of the signal contradict what we know about pulsars. These celestial objects can slow down over time due to a loss of rotational energy, which would affect the timing of the signals they emit. Nevertheless, GPM J1839-10 has remained unchanged for more than three decades. To summarize, 
Although pulsars are often the culprit behind mysterious radio signals, this time they seem to have been left innocent. While pulsars are often the first names on the list when it comes to cosmic radio signals, magnetars round out that very list. Magnetars are neutron stars that don't quite fit the pattern, with magnetic fields so strong they defy comprehension. To understand the magnitude of a magnetar's magnetic field, consider this. It is about two quadrillion times stronger than Earth's magnetic field and 20 trillion times more powerful than a refrigerator magnet. These are magnetic fields so strong they can erase data from a credit card halfway to the sun. Magnetars are known for their bizarre properties. They emit X-rays and gamma rays, but can also produce radio emissions. These emissions are often associated with stellar earthquakes, seismic events on the surface of a magnetar that release enormous amounts of energy. Imagine an earthquake, but on a cosmic scale. These stellar earthquakes can distort the magnetic field of the magnetar, causing the release of energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation, including radio waves. So, could a magnetar be the source of our mysterious GPM J1839-10 signal? Well, at first glance, it might seem plausible. After all, magnetars are known for their strange behavior. However, the concept of starburst fails to explain the constant 22-minute signal interval and its longevity. Starbursts are sporadic events, and their emissions will not have this rhythmic, clock-like precision of GPM J1839-10. Moreover, starbursts tend to change the magnetar's rotation period and magnetic field with time, which is not consistent with the unwavering consistency of our enigmatic signal. Despite their bizarre and extreme properties, magnetars are not the key to solving the mystery of GPM J1839-10. While they offer an intriguing possibility, the evidence, or lack thereof, takes us back to the drawing board in search of a better explanation. As we continue to explore astrophysics theories regarding GPM J1839-10, we come up with hypotheses that, while less common, offer tantalizing possibilities for the source of this enigmatic signal. First on the list is the White Dwarf Hypothesis. White dwarfs are the remnants of stars that have exhausted their nuclear fuel. They're incredibly dense and have strong magnetic fields and can theoretically cause radio emissions. Could a white dwarf be the signal emitter behind GPM J1839-10? Again, while the theory is intriguing, it faces problems. White dwarfs do not typically emit radio waves with the same level of consistency and periodicity as our enigmatic signal. Moreover, their magnetic fields, although strong, do not exactly match the features observed in GPM J1839-10. Another frontier theory leads us to the dynamic interactions between stars and exoplanets orbiting them. In this cosmic dance, the magnetic fields of the star and exoplanets can interact in ways that do produce unique radio emissions. While this theory offers a fascinating avenue of investigation, it also comes with its own challenges. Such interactions will likely produce a wide range of signals rather than the unwavering 22-minute cycle we observe with GPM J1839-10. Now finally, let's look at double brown dwarfs, objects on the boundary between planets and stars. When two such brown dwarfs orbit around each other, their magnetic fields can interact, potentially emitting radio waves. Now again, while this theory breaks new ground, it's not fully consistent with the data we have. Magnetic interactions between double brown dwarfs are likely to produce a more chaotic signal rather than this rhythmic, clock-like pulse of GPM J1839-10. As we continue to unravel the mystery of GPM J1839-10, a new perspective is emerging that takes into account the environment in which the signal exists. 
Could surrounding cosmic debris and stellar winds influence the signal patterns we observe? Imagine a radio signal traveling through space and encountering asteroids, gas clouds, and streams of charged particles along the way. These environmental factors can act as space filters, changing the characteristics of the signal by the time it reaches Earth. The idea is not purely speculative. Studies have shown that space debris can indeed affect the properties of radio signals, causing changes in amplitude and even frequency. But is this a case with GPM J1839-10? Stellar winds, streams of charged particles emitted by stars, that's another environmental factor to consider. These winds can interact with the radio signal, causing it to oscillate in ways that may explain some features of GPM J1839-10. Interestingly, the results of fast radio burst 2018916B offer some parallels. This particular FRB exhibited patterns that were puzzling at first, but were later found to be influenced by the local environment, including the presence of a nearby magnetar and the surrounding cosmic plasma. Could a similar environmental influence occur with GPM J1839-10? Although the contexts are different, the idea that local space conditions can affect the radio signal adds another layer of complexity to our understanding. As we approach the final frontier of this study, it's time to consider the broader implications of this enigmatic signal and what the future holds for its study. Fortunately, the source of GPM J1839-10 remains active. Its signal still traveling through the vast cosmos to reach us here on Earth. This opens the door for anyone around the world with the right tools to observe it, adding their own notes to this cosmic symphony of discovery. Dr. N. Hurley Walker, standing at the helm of previous research and her colleagues are already on the case, planning to continue their observations as well as examine archival images in search of similar phenomena in the Milky Way. Their ongoing efforts are aimed at solving this mystery, and their initial results are promising. The discovery of GPM J1839-10 has confirmed that ultra-long period radio sources are not as rare as previously thought. This suggests that upcoming studies in the galactic plane may reveal even more examples, expanding our understanding of these enigmatic signals. the universe. Here, amidst a vast array of seemingly empty spaces, where starlight barely reaches, a mystery has arisen that defies our boldest theories. More than a century ago, pioneering astrophysicists looked up, driven by their curiosity to unravel the mysteries of the heavens. Without even realizing it, they had discovered cosmic rays invisible messengers traveling almost at the speed of light, carrying stories from the far reaches of the cosmos. Today, our search continues with tools far more advanced than our predecessors could have imagined. Nevertheless, the universe still holds secrets that elude even the most sophisticated instruments of our time. One cosmic ray that stands out among these cosmic rays is the particle Amaterasu, the energy detected in it is so enormous that it defies explanation. Named after the Japanese sun goddess, this particle lights the way to understanding the deepest mysteries of the universe. But where did this mysterious particle come from? What secrets about violent and high energy processes in the universe does it hold? And why did it emerge from the darkness of the cosmic void where there are no known sources of such energy. Let's get to the bottom of this. In the early 1900s, astrophysics was on the verge of a revolutionary discovery. Scientists armed with curiosity and primitive instruments 
we're about to discover a phenomenon that would forever change our understanding of the universe. It all started with Father Theodore Wolff, a Jesuit priest and physicist. In 1909, he climbed the Eiffel Tower with a device of his own making, an electrometer. His goal was simple but bold, to measure ionizing radiation at different altitudes. Wolff's observations revealed something unexpected. The radiation level at the top of the tower was higher than at the bottom. This discovery paved the way for Victor Hest to take to the skies in a hot air balloon in 1912. Hess's daring journey into the upper atmosphere led to a crucial discovery. Radiation did not decrease with altitude, as might be expected if it came from Earth. However, it increased, indicating an extraterrestrial source he subsequently won the Nobel Prize in 1936 for his discovery of cosmic rays. Thus was born cosmic ray research, a field that would fascinate scientists for generations to come. In the annals of cosmic ray research, one event stands out for its amazing factor, the discovery of the Oh My God or OMG particle. This event was a turning point in our understanding of ultra-high energy cosmic rays. Discovered in 1991, the OMG particle was a cosmic ray of such incredible energy that it baffled scientists. With an estimated energy of about 320 exa-electron volts, it was the most energetic cosmic ray observed in history. To visualize the enormous energy of the OMG particle, Imagine the kinetic force of a baseball thrown by a professional pitcher. Now compress that energy into a particle of almost infinitesimal size. If you were in its path, rest assured, it would fly right through. It wouldn't be fatal, but the DNA of the cells affected by it would be irreversibly altered. The particle's name, oh my God, reflects the surprise it caused in the scientific community. Its energy was so enormous it approached the theoretical limit set by the Grison Zatsepin Kuzman, also called the GZK limit. The GZK limit is based on the interaction of ultra high energy cosmic rays with the cosmic microwave background, the residual radiation from the Big Bang that permeates the universe. As these cosmic rays pass through space, they occasionally collide with photons of relic radiation. These collisions can rob cosmic rays of energy, effectively limiting the maximum energy they can store over vast intergalactic distances. The limit of the GPC is estimated to be about 50 to 60 exa-electron volts. The limit is important because it helps astrophysicists determine the possible origin of ultra-high energy cosmic rays. If cosmic rays with energies above this limit are observed, it suggests that their source must be relatively close by cosmic standards, within a few hundred million light years. So let's get back to our particle. The discovery of the OMG particle raised important questions. What cosmic phenomenon could accelerate the particle to such extreme energy? How could it travel vast intergalactic distances without losing its energy? Let's move to the 21st century where the study of cosmic rays has evolved thanks to advanced technology. On May 27, 2021, a new chapter of this saga was written with the discovery of the Amaterasu particle. The Telescope Array Experiment, located in the vast expanse of Utah, was the site for this monumental discovery. Its surface detector, a network of sophisticated sensors spread over many miles, detected a cosmic ray of unprecedented energy, the Amaterasu particle. With an energy of 244 exa-electron volts, this particle stood out not only for its tremendous power, but also for its mysterious origin. Unlike previous cosmic rays, the Amaterasu particle seemed to emerge from a void in the universe, a region devoid of known astronomical objects capable of producing such high-energy phenomena. This discovery raised new questions. How could such an energetic particle emerge from the cosmic void? 
What processes could accelerate the particle to such extreme energies? The Amaterasu particle has challenged existing theories and prompted scientists to delve deeper into the mysterious world of cosmic rays. As we delve deeper into the mystery of the Amaterasu particle, we find ourselves at the crossroads of mystery and science. The origin and trajectory of this cosmic intruder is not just a mystery to be solved, perhaps it will lead to some rethinking of astrophysics. The Amaterasu particle, with its staggering energy of 244 exa-electron volts, has embarked on a journey through space of unimaginable proportions. Its path, traced by scientists, leads to an unexpected source, a vast cosmic void, seemingly desolate and calm. Although the local void is a seemingly barren region of the cosmic landscape, it's actually not completely devoid of celestial bodies. A few galaxies do exist in this void, rare and isolated. Unlike the densely packed and bright cluster of galaxies and neighboring clusters, the local void is home to no more than four known galaxies. Yet how could such a desolate space have produced a particle of such enormous energy? The theories proposed by scientists range from the plausible to the extraordinary. One compelling theory points to supermassive black holes. These cosmic giants lurking at the centers of galaxies are known for their ability to accelerate particles to near light speeds. Could a distant and invisible supermassive black hole be the birthplace of the Amaterasu particle? The mechanics of such a scenario involve complex interactions with magnetic fields and the black hole's enormous gravitational pull. As matter spirals into the black hole, it releases energy, potentially accelerating particles to ultra-high energies. However, the mystery is only compounded when one considers the particle's trajectory. The path leading back to the local void suggests an origin far away from known supermassive black holes. This inconsistency has prompted scientists to search for other possible options. In the quest to unravel the origin of the Amaterasu particle, some theories venture into the deep and virtually uncharted territories of dark matter annihilation and cosmic string collisions that are almost on the verge of speculation. The dark matter annihilation hypothesis suggests that when these mysterious particles collide, they annihilate each other, releasing massive amounts of energy, potentially generating cosmic rays of ultra-high energy such as Amaterasu. Another fascinating concept is cosmic strings, thought to be remnants of the early universe and carrying enormous mass and energy. Theorizing these cosmic strings collide like cracks in the cosmic fabric, they could be powerful enough to generate particles with energies as high as those observed in the Amaterasu particle. Also, scientists do not exclude the option that the Amaterasu particle could be a consequence of previously unexplored astrophysical processes or even evidence of physics beyond our current models. Delving deeper into the effects of cosmic rays on our planet, we find a surprising intersection between the cosmic and the technological. Cosmic rays, these high-energy particles from the depths of cosmos, don't just wander into the voids of cosmos. They interact deeply with the Earth and its technological structure. As cosmic rays enter the Earth's atmosphere, they collide with molecules, creating a rain of secondary particles. Some of these particles reach the surface and may well affect electronic systems, from the simplest gadgets to the most sophisticated satellite systems. One of the most intriguing consequences concerns our digital infrastructure. Cosmic rays can cause single event upsets, fleeting failures in electronic circuits. This can lead to errors in computer systems affecting everything from data integrity to system functionality. In space technology, satellites and spacecraft are particularly vulnerable. These machines operating in the harsh environment of space 
face a constant barrage of cosmic radiation. Engineers are forced to design these systems with robust defenses and error-correcting codes to mitigate the effects of cosmic rays. The technological impact of cosmic rays goes beyond simple equipment malfunction. It affects how we design and operate systems in space and on Earth. Research on cosmic rays like Amaterasu not only deepens our understanding of the universe, but also helps us develop more sustainable technologies. As we continue our research, we learn to adapt and evolve our technological world in harmony with the cosmic forces that shape it. The universe is a vast arena of incessant activity in which cosmic rays play no small part. Born from the most energetic and dynamic processes in the cosmos, these particles tell the story of creation, destruction, and the fundamental forces at work in the universe. Our own star, the Sun, is an abundant source of cosmic rays. Solar flares and coronal mass ejections hurl streams of uncharged particles into space, some of which reach Earth, affecting our planet's magnetic field and atmosphere. Outside our solar system, the violent death of stars and supernova explosions is a powerful cosmic ray factory. These catastrophic events release enormous amounts of energy, accelerating particles to near light speeds. Pulsars, the incredibly fast spinning remnants of massive stars, also contribute to the cosmic ray population. Their intense magnetic fields and rapid rotation create conditions for particle acceleration. Perhaps the most mysterious sources are the supermassive black holes lurking at the centers of galaxies. As matter spirals in these cosmic monsters, it releases jets of high-energy particles contributing significantly to the cosmic ray flux. Traveling through the universe, these cosmic rays interact with magnetic fields and in interstellar and intergalactic matter weaving a complex picture of astrophysical phenomena. Cosmic rays play a key role in the formation of the universe. They contribute to the ionization of interstellar and intergalactic medium, affect star formation, and even influence the cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang. Upon reaching Earth, cosmic rays can cause spectacular auroras, natural light phenomena that color our skies. They also play a role in cloud formation and Earth's climate. In astrophysics, the study of ultra-high energy cosmic rays, or UHERCs, represents a frontier of discovery and mystery. These particles, including recent discoveries such as Amaterasu, gives us a glimpse of the most powerful forces in the universe. UHERCs with energies higher than normal are not just particles, they're messengers from the far reaches of the cosmos. Their origin is often associated with the most violent and energetic events known to science, such as supernovae, gamma ray bursts, and the violent regions surrounding the supermassive black holes. The discovery of the Amaterasu particle, with its staggering energy of 244 exa-electron volts, was a milestone in the field. Discovered during the telescope array experiment, it's a testament to the persistent quest to understand these high energy processes. However, with new discoveries come new challenges. The extreme energies of UHERCs call into question our current scientific models. One of the main problems is to elucidate their origin. Due to their high energy, these particles travel great distances, slightly deflected by magnetic fields, which makes it difficult to determine their exact sources. Another challenge is understanding the mechanisms that accelerate the particles to such high energies. The processes that can transfer such enormous power to a single particle remain one of the great mysteries of astrophysics. The study of UHERCs also faces the limitations of current technology. Detecting and analyzing these rare particles requires highly sensitive and extensive observatories, often covering large geographical areas. Moreover, these beams operate at energies far beyond those achievable in man-made gas pedals, offering a unique window into the laws governing the universe at its most extreme. 
As we delve into the future of cosmic ray research, recent discoveries and ongoing projects such as CALIT, the Pierre Auger Observatory, and the Telescope Array Project are at the forefront of this scientific odyssey. CALIT, located on the International Space Station, is exploring the mysteries of high-energy cosmic ray electrons. It is its data that suggested these energy-filled electrons originate from nearby young cosmic phenomena, possibly supernova remnants. The Pierre Auger Observatory, located on the plains of Argentina in turn, observes ultra-high-energy cosmic rays from Earth. The observatory's discoveries have paved the way to understanding the extragalactic origin of these cosmic rays. To summarize, the study of cosmic rays is not just an attempt to understand high-energy particles, but also a window into the structure of the universe. These cosmic messengers arising from the most energetic events in the universe tell stories of stellar genesis, galactic evolution, and the primordial forces shaping the cosmos. They are not just particles moving through space. They are the storytellers of the world creation and cataclysmic events. Once again, they remind us of the fragile nature of life and its creations in the grand cosmic narrative. In the vast and seemingly familiar expanse of space, recent discoveries have revealed something unusual. It's neither a star nor a galaxy, but something much larger. A structure so huge that it shouldn't exist according to our current understanding of the universe. We've long believed that the universe is homogenous. It's matter evenly distributed across the vastness of space. But what if there are anomalies? space giants that defy this principle. Here in this vast ocean of space, we've discovered not just a cluster of distant galaxies, but a giant ring, a collection of cosmic formation stretching over 3.3 billion light years. How could such a massive structure exist? What forces set it in motion? And what does its presence mean for our understanding of the cosmos? Today, we dive into a story of cosmic discovery. This journey begins with a chance discovery by a team of astronomers and leads to a question that shakes the foundation of modern cosmology. Welcome to the enigma of the huge ring of galaxies. Giant Ark unexpectedly stands out among other celestial structures in the universe. This colossal structure spanning 3.3 billion light years was first spotted by the keen eyes of PhD student Alexia Lopez and her team in June of 2021. Their discovery was not just an astronomical stroke of luck, but a groundbreaking moment in space exploration. The giant arc is made up of galaxies, galaxy clusters and gas and dust Imagine a structure so huge that it could encompass thousands of our galaxies, a cluster of cosmic material that stretches across the sky in an elegant curve. According to the generally accepted cosmological principle, the universe on large scales is homogeneous and isotropic, meaning that wherever you look, the distribution of matter should be roughly the same. However, giant arc exceeds the threshold of 1.2 billion light years, which calls this principle into question. Its size and formation raise profound questions. How did such a massive structure arise? Does its presence mean that our universe is more diverse and complex than our current models suggest? To unlock the secrets of the cosmos, astronomers have developed ingenious methods to detect and study structures that are beyond the reach of traditional telescopes. Central to this quest is the mysterious light of quasars, the brightest and most distant objects in the known universe. Quasars with their immense brightness serve as cosmic beacons. Their light, traveling billions of light years, carries stories about the cosmos. 
as it passes through the various structures in the cosmos, this light interacts with them, leaving an indelible imprint that astronomers can decipher. One of the key tools in this space detective work is the study of absorption lines, specifically magnesium-2 absorption lines. When the light from a quasar passes through a region of space containing magnesium-2, the matter absorbs certain wavelengths of light. This absorption leaves distinct signatures in the light spectrum that astronomers can analyze. They can reveal the presence of otherwise invisible structures, such as the giant arc. These innovative techniques have revolutionized our ability to detect and understand the vast hidden structures of the universe. By analyzing the light from quasars, astronomers can map the distribution of galaxies and intergalactic matter, revealing the tangled web that binds the cosmos together. This method of cosmic observation is akin to using a flashlight to reveal the contours of a dark room. The light of quasars illuminates the grand design of the cosmos, revealing the colossal structures that form the fabric of our universe. Venturing deeper into space, our journey leads us to another startling discovery, the Big Ring. Spanning an astounding 1.3 billion light years, this enormous structure is a colossal cluster of galaxies and ranks next only to giant arc in its defiance of the cosmological principle. Discovered following the giant arc in early 2024, the Big Ring represents another monumental find in astronomy. The structure forms a celestial loop of galaxies, gas, and dark matter intertwined in outer space with a circumference of about 4 billion light years. The immensity of the Big Ring is not just a matter of size. If we could go outside and see it directly, it would take about 15 full moons to cover its diameter. How did such a structure form? What processes could have led to the creation of a ring of galaxies of this scale? These questions pique the curiosity of scientists, forcing us to expand the scope of our understanding of cosmic evolution and structure formation. So let's go take a closer look at the cosmological principle, the fundamental theory in astrophysics that assumes the existence of a universe in which matter is uniformly distributed and all regions look roughly the same. However, as we've mentioned, the existence of such a colossal structure spanning billions of light years disproves this notion, indicating that the universe is far more complex and diverse than we ever imagined. In such a case, it's quite appropriate to ask, how did such huge structures form? And what does their presence tell us about the evolution of the universe? Comparing these structures to others, such as Sloan's Great Wall, shows that the universe is rich in variety and scale. Compared to Sloan's Great Wall, the giant arc and the Great Ring are more unique formations. The wall is a branded chain of galaxies, while the arc and the ring have a more distinct shape, suggesting that their creation was influenced by very different cosmic processes. As we delve into the mysteries of their origin, we explore various theories and models. Among the hypothesized mechanisms of their formation is the influence of dark matter, an invisible but pervasive component of the cosmos. Its gravitational attraction could organize the clustering of galaxies into these huge arrangements. The cosmic web theory proposes a universe in which galaxies are interconnected by threads of denser matter. These megastructures may represent intersections or particularly dense regions of this cosmic web. Another interesting theory is the theory of baryon acoustic oscillations, commonly known as BAO. These cosmic echoes are not just remnants of the early universe, but potential clues to unraveling the mysteries of structures such as the giant arc and the great ring. SAOs are thought to have originated in the early universe during a period of intense heat and density. 
Here, baryons, particles such as protons and neutrons, were in constant interaction with photons, particles of light. This interaction created pressure waves, similar to sound waves, rolling through the hot plasma of the early universe. Imagine a stone thrown into a quiet pond. The impact creates ripples that spread out in concentric circles. In the same way, saws spread through the early universe, creating ripples in the very fabric of space. These ripples or acoustic waves left their mark on the distribution of matter in the universe. As the universe expanded and cooled, these acoustic waves froze in place, imprinting a unique pattern into the cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang. This pattern extends to the distribution of galaxies and cosmic structures, influencing their formation and location. The BAO imprint is not just a relic of the past, but a tool for astronomers. By studying these patterns, scientists can trace the expansion of the universe and the formation of structures like the giant arc and the great ring. BAO helps us understand the scale of these structures and provides clues about the nature of dark matter and dark energy. However, there are alternative theories these are Roger Penrose's conformal cyclic cosmology and the cosmic string hypothesis, each of which offers a unique angle on the fabric of the cosmos. Roger Penrose, a famous physicist, proposes a fundamentally different idea in his conformal cyclic cosmology. According to this theory, the universe goes through a series of cycles each beginning with the Big Bang and ending in a smooth, infinite expansion. From this point of view, our present-day universe is just one phase in an eternal sequence of cosmic events. Penrose's theory challenges the traditional view of a single Big Bang. Instead, he argues that the end of each universe becomes the conformally scaled beginning of the next. The cycle of death and rebirth devoid of singularities, provides a thought-provoking alternative to our understanding of time and space. Now, how does this relate to our megastructures? This can be directly understood through several key aspects of the theory. In CCC, the final state of the previous universe cycle, which is infinitely extended and empty of matter, can influence the beginning of the next cycle. This influence is exercised not through matter as it is dispersed, but through the conformal geometry of space-time. In essence, the geometry of the previous universe imposes itself on the next. Penrose suggests that certain characteristics of the universe, especially its geometry, may be transferred through these cycles. This transfer has the potential to imprint large-scale structures from one cycle to the next. When a new universe cycle, a new Big Bang begins, these imprints or remnants of the previous universe may manifest themselves as initial conditions or irregularities in the cosmic microwave background. These irregularities, in turn, may have affected the distribution of matter in the early universe, leading to the formation of massive structures such as the giant arc. This challenges the standard cosmological principle of uniformity, suggesting that the large-scale structure of the universe may not be completely random, but rather influenced by the echoes of past cycles. While conventional cosmology attempts to explain the existence of such huge structures within the age of the observable universe, CCC proposes an alternative path. It suggests that these structures may not be anomalies, but rather features influenced by the cyclic nature of the universe. Another exciting concept is that of cosmic strings. These hypothetical one-dimensional defects in space-time may have formed in the universe's early moments, resembling cracks or lines of immense gravitational attraction. Cosmic strings, as scientists believe, may have a profound effect on the surrounding space. 
According to the hypothesis, these strings may act as cosmic scale stitching, affecting the distribution of galaxies and possibly causing the unusual alignments observed in structures such as the Great Arc and the Great Ring. Their existence, while still theoretical, opens a fascinating window into the complexity of the early universe. The quest to prove or disprove these ideas drives our scientific research forward, lighting the way to the deeper truths of cosmology. Our understanding of the evolution of the universe is constantly changing thanks to these discoveries. These colossal formations, such as the giant arc and the great ring, they force us to reconsider the fundamental processes governing the evolution of the universe and current cosmological models. Think about the impact of these giant structures on cosmic evolution. They're not just clusters of galaxies. They're vast networks of matter and energy that affect the gravitational balance of the cosmos. Their existence suggests that the universe may be connected far more tightly than we ever imagined. These discoveries emphasize the interconnectedness of various cosmic phenomena. From the birth of stars to the mysterious nature of dark matter, everything in the universe is part of a grand interwoven plan. The large-scale structures we observe may be important for understanding how the various forces and components of the universe interact over astronomical distances and timescales. As our technological capabilities grow, so does our potential for astronomical breakthroughs. The future of space exploration and observation holds untold possibilities. With each new discovery, we peel away another layer of the universe's mysteries, moving closer to understanding the grand design of this vast cosmic sea. In the meantime, we look forward to new discoveries that will shed more light on the megastructures of our universe. In a cosmos where distance is measured not in miles, but in years of light travel, there's a star whose journey to us defies the usual cosmic scale. It is Arendelle, a luminary so distant that its light left it more than 12 billion years ago. By comparison, the light from this star began its journey to us when the universe was less than 1.4 billion years old. It crossed the vastness of space-time to reach us here on Earth. By comparison, the Sun is only eight light minutes away. At the same time, the Arendelle light reaching us has been traveling through space since the earliest life forms formed on Earth. Discovered by the eye of the Hubble Space Telescope, Arendelle emerged from the darkness like a clue from the greatest detective story in history. It's not just a star. It's a record breaker, the most distant star we've ever seen. Arendelle's light has traveled more than 12 billion years to reach us, starting when the universe was barely 1.4 billion years old. So how did we manage to detect such a distant object, and what does this discovery tell us? In our desire to map the cosmos, Astronomers have long sought to push the boundaries of observable universe. This domain is defined not only by the capabilities of our instruments, but also by the speed of light itself. On this cosmic horizon, every star and every galaxy is a potential beacon of the past, inviting us to uncover its history. Meet Arendelle, a star at the very edge of this observable frontier. Its light, which occurred more than 12 billion years ago, gives us a rare glimpse into the era of the universe's history that's virtually unexplored. Contrary to conventional standards, this celestial was given a proper name from the beginning, indicating its rarity and significance. The star was christened Arendelle, the name of an Anglo-Saxon origin meaning morning star. 
The name Arendelle is particularly appropriate because it symbolizes the star's role as the harbinger of the cosmic dawn. The cosmic dawn refers to the period in the history of the universe several hundred million years after the Big Bang, when the first stars and galaxies formed, ending the cosmic dark ages and filling the universe with light for the first time. The Hubble Space Telescope was the instrument that brought Arendelle into our field of view. Hubble's sharp vision peering across the vast reaches of intergalactic space captured an image of this distant star. The initial observation was no ordinary discovery. It required the alignment of cosmic forces, the deflection of light through gravitational lensing, and tireless data analysis by astronomers who decoded signals amidst the cosmic noise. Arendelle appeared before us not as a fiery disk, as stars are often depicted, but as a luminous point whose details are obscured by the mist of time and space. Nevertheless, even this faint image is a treasure trove of information, the starting point for a journey of discovery that goes back to the earliest chapters of the universe itself. In the history of astronomy, few instruments have revolutionized our view of the universe as profoundly as the Hubble Space Telescope. Arendelle's discovery was the triumph of this great observatory. Astronomers using Hubble's advanced optics explored the universe looking for faint glimpses of light from the oldest stars. It was like looking for a needle in a cosmic haystack. Wide Field Camera 3 the workhorse among Hubble's suite of instruments, played a key role. Its sensitivity to ultraviolet light, which is often blocked by Earth's atmosphere, allows it to capture the high-energy glow of distant stars. The task was enormous. Arendelle's light during its marathon journey through space had dimmed and shifted to the red side to a fraction of its original intensity. Its detection required not only the right instruments, but also a confluence of favorable conditions. Scientists have always sought to unlock the mysteries of the distant universe to look deeper into the cosmic expanse. Arendelle's discovery represents a significant step in this direction as the detection of distant galaxies has historically been a difficult task. Usually, when astronomers turn their gaze to these distant corners, they discern only the brightest beacons, quasars, and blazars. These objects serve as cosmic beacons, their light enduring a multi-billion year journey to reach us, though it dims at great distances. Until now, only a few galaxies have been detected at such vast distances, their presence revealed by the scant light preserved by space travel. But the fortuitous positioning of a star that amplifies its light has opened the door for us to see it. So meet gravitational lensing, nature's own magnifying glass. This phenomenon occurs when the gravity of a massive object, such as a cluster of galaxies, distorts the space around it, bending the path of light from objects behind it, much like magnifying glass bends light to a focal point. Arendelle's discovery is a textbook example of gravitational lensing in action. Located behind a cluster of galaxies known as WHL 0137-08, Arendelle's light has been bent and amplified, allowing it to reach us across the vast expanse of the universe. Without this natural magnifying glass, the star's faint glow might have remained hidden and its mysteries unsolved. The importance of gravitational lensing goes far beyond Arendelle's discovery. It's become an indispensable tool in the astronomer's kit, allowing us to study objects that would otherwise be inaccessible to our most powerful telescopes. With lensing, we can observe the detailed structure of distant galaxies, observe events such as supernovae in the early universe, and even search for dark matter by mapping the invisible mass responsible for the lensing effect. Gravitational lensing also allows us to test the limits of our understanding of physics. It provides a natural laboratory for studying the behavior of light and gravity, 
offering evidence to support the predictions of the general theory of relativity. The role of this phenomenon in the study of distant celestial objects is crucial. It not only magnifies the light, but also stretches the images across the beam of view, providing multiple angles of observation. This can reveal details about the structure and motion within these distant objects, offering a more complete picture of their nature. Thus, the cosmic quirk predicted by Einstein's general theory of relativity opened a window into the distant universe and was the key to the discovery of this star. Delving deeper into Arendelle's personality, we uncover the story decoded by photons traveling through space. The Hubble data is the Rosetta Stone that turned these ancient signals into a story of the properties of stars and cosmic conditions. From the data collected by Hubble, scientists have concluded that Arendelle is not only old, but extremely bright, far surpassing the brightness of our own sun. Its brightness suggests that it is a massive star that burns its nuclear fuel rapidly and lives a fast and furious life by cosmic standards. The Arendelle light spectrum bears the fingerprints of the elements in the star's atmosphere. These spectral lines are a clue to its composition, showing that the star probably formed from the primordial material of the early universe, not enriched with the heavy elements that characterize younger stars, such as our Sun. The significance of the Arendelle find cannot be overemphasized. As a star at the dawn of the universe, it provides a rare glimpse into the era known as the Cosmic Dawn a time when the finest stars and galaxies formed, forever changing the dark, blank canvas of our early universe. During this formative period, the universe was a place of profound transformation. The first stars were the creators of the first heavy elements, the building blocks for everything from planets to life itself. The baton of cosmic discovery passed from the venerable Hubble to the James Webb Advanced Space Telescope, and that represents a huge step forward. It's given us a better look at Arendelle, the most distant star ever observed, and thus opened a window into early space. Originally discovered by the Hubble Space Telescope, the true nature of Arendelle remained an agonizing mystery. Was it a single star, a dense cluster, or something else entirely? JWST has now dispelled the ambiguity by confirming that Arendelle is a single celestial body, possibly a star system with a main bright star at its center. Through spectral analysis, JWST has painted the star in its true colors. It is a B-type blue giant a stellar giant with a temperature of 13,000 to 16,000 Kelvin and a luminosity nearly a million times that of our Sun. This colossal star, similar to Regulus and Algulus of the Milky Way, is a testament to the grandeur of stellar evolution. JWST's revelations go beyond Arendelle. It shed light on the galaxy in which the star is located known as Doga Rising. This galaxy, named for its shape, is believed to be the most enlarged galaxy discovered during the dawn of the universe. Gravitational lensing, a phenomenon that turns massive galaxy clusters into cosmic magnifying glasses, amplified sunrise arcs light by a thousand of times. This effect allowed JWST to observe not only Arendelle, but also the surrounding bright star cradles providing clues to the formation of early galactic structures. These observations have opened up a lively region of space with young star clusters less than 5 million years old actively producing new stars. JWST's research on these clusters may one day solve the mystery of globular cluster formation, an enigma that has puzzled astronomers for decades. Arendelle, a star of immense brightness and age, is not an isolated wonder, but a key to the broader cosmic landscape of its time.
together with neighboring objects, it forms a puzzle that, put together, can reveal the conditions of the early universe, a time when the cosmos was a frontier of formation and transformation. The area around Arendelle is a field rich in data. The light from these objects carries signatures of a young universe, encoded in wavelengths stretched by the expanding fabric of space. By analyzing this light, astronomers will be able to decipher the chemical composition of the early universe, understanding the prevalence of elements and the conditions that led to their formation. The vicinity of Arendelle is particularly intriguing because it represents the region where the first galaxies formed. Stars in these galaxies are candidates for what astronomers call Population 3 stars, hypothetical first-generation stars born from the primordial gas that filled the universe after the Big Bang. The search for Population 3 stars is one of the holy grails of modern astronomy. These stars, formed from the pure hydrogen and helium of the early universe, were massive, hot, and short-lived. Their existence is key to understanding not only stellar evolution, but also the epoch of reionization when the opaque universe became transparent to light. The discovery of a Population 3 star would be akin to the discovery of a living fossil, an object that, against all odds, provided direct evidence of the first chapter of stellar evolutionary history. Such a discovery would confirm theories about the early universe and provide unprecedented insight into the birth of the first complex atoms. Arendelle, while not a Population 3 star, is a beacon pointing us to this elusive population. Its existence in the galaxy since the origin of the universe suggests that we are looking in the right places, that remnants of these early stars may be hidden among the data that we're already collecting. In their quest to unlock the secrets of the early universe, Arendelle and his contemporaries are more than just points of light. They are breadcrumbs leading us back in time to the very threshold of the cosmic dawn where the first stars ignited the darkness and lit the universe with light.